Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at a little bit of Wizardry Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord. So this is a game that's in early access right now at time of recording. It came out a couple days ago and I asked uh, Digital Eclipse for a key because some people have been asking me about it and I wanted to check it out for myself. This is a, uh, I think it's most accurate to call it a remaster of the original Wizardry uh, that came out way back in the early 80s. According to the FAQ, which I'll leave a link to, uh, the game is basically complete, like you can play it all the way from beginning to end. Uh, just missing maybe like some visual and uh, and audio assets. Uh, and it obviously we'll probably have some bugs of, of various kinds. Let's go ahead and we'll just jump into town here with a party that I've uh, been working on for a bit so I can show you a thing or two in relative <laughs> safety. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, essentially... This is a uh, wizardry one with a fresh coat of paint. We've got like these nice 3D graphics and everything going on here, which uh, is, a, is a big step up from the original sort of graphics we have in the bottom right there. And uh, what makes this, this interesting is that apparently this game is running on top of the Apple II code from the original game. So mechanically it should be pretty faithful. Uh, unless you enable certain quality of life features uh, or, or changes that they've made, which uh, we'll talk about in a bit. Let's, uh, we'll get into a little fight here. Because this is basically, this is, this is, what you see is what you get. <laughs> um, you know, this, uh, this isn't wizard, like Wizardry 6. Uh, this isn't like Legend of Grimrock or anything like that. This, from a game, strict gameplay perspective, it's, fairly simple you run around a maze that's several floors deep and uh, you fight monsters in turn-based combat and the way that works is you can see we've got three characters in the front three characters in the back and uh, these front characters can attack while the back characters cannot so uh, they have to cast spells to accomplish anything so we'll cast a couple spells here as well and it tells you what the spells do. These are basic fire spells that I'm casting. Enemies have certain resistances sometimes to various elements or magics or whatever. You can kind of see in the bottom right, again, like what you would have been looking at in the original version of the game. And we can also look at the combat log. Now you notice I'm playing with a, an Xbox controller here. Uh, that's because the game is really built for controller right now. Um, there's no mouse support, and the keyboard support is a little little wonky. I don't know if that's a product of the old Apple II days or what. But, uh, uh, yeah, that's really the best way to play. So if you don't have a controller, you may struggle in the early access period for a while until they update things. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we got a chest here. So a lot of the times, enemies will drop a chest. And that's the only way to kind of get loot in, in this game, or get gold, is uh, at the end of fights, if there's no chest, you'll get gold automatically. But if, if there is a chest, you have to open it to get anything. Otherwise, you just get the experience. Uh, we got two ways that we can do this. We can inspect it for a trap with our thief. Uh, like so. Or we can cast a priest spell instead, which will give us uh, basically, a, like I think it's a, literally a 95% chance of determining what trap is in here. Well, let's inspect. We have a 90% chance. So she thinks it's an exploding box. Let's give it a try. 92% certainty, exploding box. Disarm. She succeeded. So it was, in fact, an exploding box, which would have damaged everybody in the party. And if you're low level, frankly, probably will kill half your party. <laughs> uh, even at this low level. This game is... This game is very difficult. By today's standards, I would say. So yeah, um... I mentioned, uh, I believe that, you know, the game's not like Wizardry 6 or 7. Uh, you know, like, town is basically... We get out of here. Town is basically just a menu. Rather than you being dumped in a world to explore, uh, you know, this is kind of what you get, because that's how the original game was, basically. Uh, 
And it's also not like Legend of Grimrock because you're not running around doing real-time fights um, or like looking for secret buttons to push or anything like that. Like I don't think that element of gameplay really exists here. Uh, so that's important to keep in mind, uh, just to set some expectations of what the game is. Because again, you know, this is kind of a remastering. It's not, not like a full-on remake or anything like that. So the gameplay is fairly simplistic. Now we got to fight here with two groups. You don't see these terribly often, at least not on this floor of the dungeon. So why don't we try a little bit of magic here? Uh... You can also see the guys in front are shadowed because we don't know what they are. You kind of do <laughs> after you've played the game for a bit. But uh, I guess they're going to be adding in a bestiary, which was not in the original game, that will like tell you a little bit about the monsters and stuff and what they can do, their stats, I guess, maybe. Uh, so that's that's a nice touch. So the, uh, the old identification, monster identification system will have a little bit of a different purpose in this game, perhaps. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll start attacking here. Uh, why don't we do this? We'll attack these guys. These orcs in the back like to run away a lot. But then we'll use some magic. So uh, I just got this spell. Because I just got to level 5 with this guy, Big Fire. It's a big AoE spell, so we'll try that out. And you can see Yarm here. He's got that arrow on his character's um, tile there. He's, uh, he's ready to level up. We'll go over level ups in a bit. But uh, why don't we try, we'll do a, a sleep spell on those guys, maybe. And uh, we'll do a darkness as well, just to show off some spell effects. There's your darkness, that makes enemies easier to hit. Ooh, and there's, there's a big flashy fire spell. Just absolutely erase that entire group of enemies, which is nice. Now, actually, yeah, if you want to do this faster, like I'm, I'm pushing attack, 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 parry, parry, parry. Uh, there's a faster way to do it. On the left there, you can see quick select. Uh, if you just push that, it'll do basically that for you. I do like these enemy uh, models and animations. We've got a little bit of a dragon warrior, dragon questy vibe. Uh, why don't we try... There you go. So, uh, she thinks it's an exploding box with 95% certainty. Let's try to disarm. We succeeded, thank God. Does a fair bit of damage. Uh, but yeah, the, the Dragon Warrior connection is interesting because it's my understanding that the original Dragon Warrior was inspired by wizardry to some extent, so everything comes full circle. <laughs> Ooh, this is interesting. I actually haven't seen weird humanoids before. I'm going to guess those are Zombos. Yeah. Well, this will be fun. This If you if you find this group uh, with a level 1 party, you're probably dead. <laughs> Unless you can run away. These Bushwhackers are nasty if they don't run away. So we'll try that out. Uh, he's already tapped out. As far as his level 3 spells, you can see his charges there. Basically, uh, it kind of uses this D&D-ish situation uh, where you have spell points and then you can cast whatever spells of that level with those spell points. Every spell cast costs one slot, essentially. So it's, I don't know, it's a little bit like being a sorcerer, I guess. Uh, and that goes for priests and mages. But why don't we try... Uh, do a little fire there on that guy. Uh, you don't have... Uh, any small well, you don't really have any magic left. Uh, we'll try that. Uh, here we go. Yeah, big fire on those guys. I don't. I don't want to know what kind of nasty shit they have. <laughs> no, they're not that tough though. Go blam. All right, so he ran away. Look at that seven damage. That's enough damage right there to just outright kill a level one character for a lot of characters, uh, a lot of character classes, depending on their stats. So we could heal in combat, but we don't need to do that right now. Nice chunk of XP there. So one thing is, uh, yeah, when you rest in this game, 
you actually don't get any HP back. <laughs> it's not, it's a little, little wonky, and it doesn't make any sense, but, you know, this is the 80s, <laughs> remember? So, when you have somebody stay at the inn, and this is, um, with the, kind of the original mechanics, I, I'll show you the, the, some of the quality of life options in a bit, but, uh, yeah, as you can see, refill spell points only ages character one week, and then the healing is really stingy for the price. Like, you can't afford to uh, to stay in the end at these prices. So if you want to heal, what you got to do is you got to go in, into the maze, and you need to, make, need to make sure you've got a priest in your party. You run over here, and then you cast Dio's here until people are uh, healed up. The UI is a little buggy at the moment, but there you go. Everybody's healed up. Now we leave. And we go to the inn. And if we, uh, actually, if we go here and we just inspect her, uh, her spells, so she's got 232 two right now. Go to the inn, go here. Rest at the stables. Tells you how much XP you need to level. That's a holdover from the original game, because that's how you would find out, I think. Uh, and then we go and we inspect again. You can see she got 542. She gets she gets all her spell points back. Now it says that it ages her one week, but it doesn't age anybody else when they stay at the end for one week. <laughs> it's just the person that stayed there. So it's a bit it's a bit odd the way the aging system works in this game. And your age essentially, I think, affects how your stats change when you level up. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what else uh, changes, if anything. Because I did go through and I, I played a little bit of the original DOS version of Wizardry. Well, I played the Ultimate Archives version, which is a slightly modified version of the original that came out uh, after um, the DOS version came out a few years after the Apple II version. So I'm not sure exactly what kind of changes there are. But... Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, in here or whatever, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a bit strange. Um, but if we look at some of these options here, the old school options as they're called, uh, I've turned on the original a in, in age configuration. Uh, you could turn this off and they'll kind of switch up the age stat. So it's supposedly a little easier to understand. Uh, although I don't know if they ever explain what it does. <laughs> so... I'm not sure how how much that makes a difference. Um, yeah, I guess we can go over some of these. Like, if you don't want the mini map that's in the dungeon here, we can turn some stuff off. We can go and uh, take a look at our. Well, you can see down in the bottom left there, we've got our our mini map that wasn't in the original game. There was no map. You had to do it with graph paper. So that's a nice. That's a nice thing to have, but we can go down here, old school options, and uh, turn that off if you uh, really want to have a hard time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave that on, I think. There's also a text-only Dumapic. So the original Dumapic spell would only give you coordinates and facing, but uh, you can see I have in the bottom left there, last Dumapic cast. Uh, this is sort of what I've explored in the dungeon. Basically, it takes a snapshot of your auto map and uh, gives you a real map to, or a big map to look at. So you can see this is basically how big the dungeon is. Like every floor, I think, is going to be 20 by 20 in size. And then uh, you explore all the floors to get to the, the evil wizard at the bottom and... There you go, because that's that's kind of what we're doing here. There's a, an evil wizard called Wardna, who uh, stole a magic amulet of some great power, created this dungeon, and now Trebor, the mad overlord himself, is tasked uh, the adventurers of the land with retrieving said amulet. Ooh, big hit. Uh, so what else should we talk about here? I guess we can go over some of the town stuff a little bit, like character creation, that kind of thing, leveling up. And then maybe we can pop back into the dungeon. 
talk about some additional thoughts while we do a little bit of exploration and all that good stuff. So there you go. Yeah, there's no chest that time. So we uh, just got the gold for free. Sometimes Dio sucks and you only get one HP. <laughs> there we go. Uh, okay, yeah, let's let's go back into town. So as I have it set up, I'm using the original games um, sort of uh, leveling up and character creation mechanics. Uh, but you can change that in the options, in the old school options here. So in the original game, you got random starting attribute points and random attribute advancement. Uh, in the sort of updated version here, you can turn these off and you'll get a set amount of stat points, I think 10 or 12 or something like that to make a character with. And then you'll get stat points that you can use to level up your stats every time you level up, uh, rather than it being random. So it's an interesting option for folks to try out. But as I said, I have the original options on, so if we go here and rest at the end, this is how you level up. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one of these you choose. There you go, you got a massive HP boost, because he's got a, he's got fairly high stats. Mages normally don't get <laughs> high HP boost like that. But uh yeah, he's got got a nice bit of stats there because you can see his strength actually went down which is a bit of a bummer because uh, I was kind of hoping to class change this guy eventually and uh, I'll show you what I mean uh, because if we go to the training grounds we can actually inspect our roster here so the, the game will start you with these level 2 characters which is, I think, just a little bit of mercy, because <laughs> I don't think the original game gave you level 2 characters. Uh, and actually, one thing that's important is when you make a, a new character, you're going to have zero starting gold in the upper right there. But uh, what you need to do is enter the maze, like so, and then just turn right back around and leave. And that'll give you your starting gold for all those characters. Uh, and then you can go buy stuff in, in the shop, which we'll check out in a bit, maybe. Uh, anyway, so if we look at our roster here, these are some characters that are a little worse for wear that I attempted to, to do. Uh, like, she's dead. But then this guy has been absolutely reduced to ashes, <laughs> which is uh, basically slightly more dead. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Um, but we need to make a little bit of room to make a character. You can only have so many. So let's go ahead and we'll delete a character uh, like this guy so we can make someone. So this is the character creation screen. Uh, if you have the original mechanics on, you can re-roll with the X button here until you get something desirable. And if you re-roll enough times, you'll get some higher stats like a, uh, a 19 here. It's my recommendation that you do this. <laughs> It doesn't take that long, and uh, the stats are pretty useful slash important, uh, I've, I've been finding. Uh, at least, especially for your, for your frontline fighters. And then if you keep rolling, eventually, I probably won't be able to get it in a reasonable amount of time here. See, we got an 18 there. But if, if you get really lucky, you'll get more than 20. Yeah, there you go. You saw a 28 come up there. And then you can use that to uh, create an even more powerful character. And the stats matter for that because if we just make a human here, like every every race has its own starting statistics here, but any race can be any class. Uh, yeah, you can see on the right there, we need three points to be a fighter, three points to be a mage, etc., etc. And so there you go. With, with 11 strength, he's unlocked the ability to become a fighter. With 11 intellect, he becomes a mage. And we don't have enough points to become a priest. Or anything like that. But you can see, like, Samurai has really high stat requirements. It's possible to start as a Samurai if you get, like, one of those super high 28 stat rolls. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to level up first. Uh, because you can class change in this game. Which is kind of like 
the way it works in Wizardry 6 and 7. Um, it's a little tricky, though. Uh, just leveling up ages your character. Uh, and again, I'm not sure how much that really matters, but I think there's a loading screen that has some kind of a, a mention about it. Um, so that's something to watch out for. Uh, but when you do change class, it'll reset all your stats. Uh, I'll show it to you in a sec here. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look and just uh, give him some vitality. Vitality is good because it gives you more HP uh, every level, which is nice. Uh, we got one more stat to distribute there. All right, so we can actually, you know what? Why don't we um, do this a little differently so I can show you something else. We'll do that and we'll do that. That's fine. Okay, so we could be a fighter or, or a priest with these stats. If we want to be a priest, we have to be good or evil. Can't be neutral. Whereas a fighter can be anything. Most classes can be anything, but... Actually, I guess that's not true, uh, actually, because uh, the thief has to be neutral or evil. The bishop has to be good or evil. And the samurai has to be good or neutral, I think. So, uh, your alignment choice does matter. There's also certain gear that's locked to certain alignments that you can get, like, later in the game, I think. And, uh... Good and evil characters can't be in the same party with one another without, well, at least... In the original game, I think you could finagle it. But, uh, it's not... something that's doable in town here, anyway. I don't, I don't know if this version of the game has changed some of the tricks that you can do or not, but... Uh, let's make, we'll make this guy good, and then you got a kind of a smattering of portraits here. Um, the non-human races are very much a work in progress, so they'll add more of these later, I guess. Uh, but it doesn't matter, you just pick a... Pick a portrait, pick a name, and there you go. Inspect our roster. You can see there he is, good human fighter guy. And then that's all his stuff. Again, he starts with nothing, but if you take him into the maze, and then come back out, you'll you'll get some starting gold for him. Um, you know, I think 150, 200 gold, something like that. So you can buy some gear over in the uh, the shop here. So this is where you can buy some starter equipment and a little bit beyond. Uh, there's not much here, but I th I think that it's possible that more stuff unlocks later. Uh, I'm not really sure of the mechanics of it, but you'll also find stuff in the dungeon out of, like, chests and stuff after fights. So, um, you know, there, there is a bit of gear progression in the game. Uh, you can identify items. I think I may have one here. Yeah, like, she's got this staff, so if I identify it... It's just a staff. <laughs> Nothing special, so I can sell that. And at least get my gold back, so that's something. Um, you can also identify items with a bishop if you have one of those in your party. I don't at the moment, but that's another option. Uh, other stuff. Uh, the tavern is where you kind of rearrange your party and you can remove or add characters here. Change where they live in the uh, party lineup, I guess. Uh, the inn we've talked about. So the only other place is the temple here. And you can see... It costs money to resurrect people. Now, it's actually based on their level, so she's a level 2 character, but she's just dead. <laughs> Whereas he's a level 1 character who's been reduced to ashes because I tried to resurrect him once already, and it failed. And uh, that's an important note about this game. You shouldn't necessarily get too attached to your characters, because bad things can happen. <laughs> Even uh, with the best uh, efforts of preparation. And... Uh, if I try to resurrect him... Ooh, okay, he, he made it. What if I try to resurrect... her? Unsuccessful, reduced to ashes, and now I don't even have money enough... Oh, I do have enough money, I had just enough, there you go. So, uh, she was rezzed. Uh, I think the UI's a little buggy there, <laughs> as well, but... Uh, you can see there, that cost all my gold, and that takes a, takes a little while to get 1,500 gold. You know, maybe half an hour, hour, something like that, depending on where you are in the game. Um, but yeah, you can see those, those characters are back now. So good for them. But, uh, yeah, if, if 
a resurrection fails when a character is ashes, then they're that's it. They're done. Erased from the game. Uh, so you can think of it kind of like maybe Darkest Dungeon or XCOM, as far as your characters go. Now if we jump back into the maze, I will show you another feature of the game. So if we smooth these guys one square, let's say, we go to the camp, uh, I think... Actually, I don't know if you can do, the, do it in this version of the game or not. Let's see. Yeah, return to town. So we're going to leave these guys here in the maze. Go back to town. And uh, then we'll go to the tavern. We'll add, uh, let's say, this, this guy we just made to our party. And you can see we have 76 gold right now. We have, we have two options here. We can rejoin the party that's already out, or we can enter with these guys. Or this one guy. If we go here, we go to camp. I think we can. Yeah, since we left these guys on this square, you can see in the bottom right there at this location. We can add all these guys to our party. Well, we can add five of them to the party anyway. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's an interesting little feature. If your characters get stuck, you might be able to send in like a rescue squad with some potions or some healing or something like that. Uh, and then get those those characters out. Uh, or if they die, you can find the corpses of the characters that died in here, I think. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And you can see there, yeah, we, we're back in town. We just got a bunch of gold for this guy's starting gold. Uh, all right, let's go to the tavern. We'll remove this guy from the party. And uh, we'll rejoin our out party. There you go. I, I don't know how many parties you can have out at a time. But it's a it's a kind of an interesting, unique feature to wizardry uh, that isn't relevant in the, in the later 6 and 7 games because uh, you just have the one party. So uh, I think I've talked about pretty much everything that I need, need to talk about as far as just generally how the game works. Uh, yeah, I mean, the game, it's fairly simple and uh, it's pretty hard. <laughs> It'll probably take a while and, and a lot of grinding to get through it. So if you're not... For someone who doesn't like grinding, then I don't think you're going to connect with this game very much. Ooh, we got surprised there. Uh, but if you want to see, you know, kind of how the original Wizardry was, but in a, a bit of a more accessible, nicer-to-look-at format, you know, then I think the game is a lot more interesting. Um, now, I think it's... I think actually there is one more thing that I can show you real quick before we start talking about like some final thoughts here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, just open that, I guess. There you go. Uh, yeah, let's just take a quick look at class changing real fast. So if we go to... Uh, what is it? The training grounds. You can go to edit character. And then we'll pick one of our characters here. Like, I think she has the stats to be a samurai. So I can make her a samurai. She's got huge stats right now. But if I do that... There you go. She's level one again. And actually, interestingly, her stats didn't decrease. Um, I don't know why that is. Normally they do. But now that she's a samurai, she's she's got access to much better equipment. And uh, she'll eventually start learning mage spells as well. Uh, which is cool. And then, uh, since we still want to have a thief, I can take Augie here. And do a similar thing. And there you go. And again, yeah, like... Normally, your stats decrease when you do this, so I'm not sure what's going on there. That's a bit strange. Um, your stats are supposed to go basically to your racial defaults when you class change. 
But I'm not sure why they're not here. Because they had it. Like, I've done this before off off screen. <laughs> when I was just playing the game. And that's what's happened. So I'm not sure why it's not happening now. But it's very interesting. Uh, anyway, so if we... I guess if we go and inspect our characters here. Let's just uh, re-equip some people here if we go to our items. Now she can wear better gear than this. I'm just going to leave her as is. And then uh, you just uh, wear that for now. And we'll go back to the end. So basically now that they're level 1 again, they're probably not going to get much in the way of HP, but they'll level up fairly quickly. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, you know, that's that's the gist. Let's try, try and look around at some new stuff. While we uh, chit-chat a bit. So I do have some, some thoughts. So I mentioned that I, I got the game for free because I asked for a key to uh, be able to show it off here because I'm interested in the game. But the asking price for this game is $30. Uh, that's a lot of money for what is essentially a remaster. Uh, the Steam page says it's a 3D, 3D remake. I personally would remove the remake language from that marketing because <laughs> um, it's... It's really, yeah, remaster is more accurate because mechanically there's not a lot that's being changed here. Um, you know, the dungeons are going to be basically the same or literally the same even. So uh, I think that a remaster is a much more appropriate term here. Uh, aside from the quality of life changes, which, you know, they they do make some, some different or make a difference in the gameplay a bit. Uh, the other... Oh, is that a secret wall? <laughs> That's got to be a secret wall, right? Oh, interesting. I uh, It's the first time I've seen that. I haven't actually explored anything, really, so... Ta-da! Oh. There's nothing in here. <laughs> okay, well... Oh, there's another one here, though. I mean, so that looks nice. But I would say, overall, like, you know, the graphics are nice, but the presentation is kind of bare-bones. Like, if we go back and just look at uh, one of these rooms here, I suppose deal with these guys first. I guess we can talk about some combat-related stuff. Like, I mean, the combat I'm fine with it is what it is. You know, it's it looks nice enough. The uh, combat intro animation can take a little bit on the long side at times. But otherwise, yeah, I don't, I don't really have any problems with... The presentation here. Um, I think it looks looks cool. The animations are nice. The monsters look nice and everything. So, yeah, this is mostly good. We can also turn the health bars on if we want. And also, you don't get to target any specific enemies. Your characters kind of just figure it out on their own, which sometimes leads to wasted attacks, which is a bit unfortunate. Also, um, Jex there is doing a lot of damage because he gets multiple attacks. Uh, if we scroll up in the combat log, you can see he hits two times because he's a, he's a fighter. And uh, fighters get extra attacks as they level up. As do some of the other classes, I believe. Some of the fighty ones like Samurai, for example. There we are. And no treasure chest. Uh, anyway, I wanted to go back and just give an example here. So when I say that, you know, the presentation's a, a little bare bones, but I guess we got to get through this. Um, I'm talking about, like, kind of the decoration around the dungeon. I will also say, I, like, the music is fine. I like the music well enough, but it would be nice if there's more of it. Uh, especially given the price, like, I think this is the only f combat track that I've heard. I haven't listened super closely, but I don't think there, there are more. Uh, and the dungeon music is the same and everything, so... Uh, you know, these tracks are fine, but they're going to get old uh, through however many levels of dungeon there are. Uh, you need to do that now. Uh, we'll just leave that chest be. <laughs> Blades is kind of dangerous. Um, yeah, so 
Like what? Why? Why is the is the room empty? You know, I can understand that they don't want to change the map. So, you know, uh, for example, like what if we made this? Uh, this is like a dining hall, right? And so you couldn't put like a big table in the middle here because you wouldn't be able to walk over it necessarily. Uh, but maybe you could put something on the sides, or I don't know, so you could still like walk around. But you know, give me some landmarks. Tell me a story. What's going on in this dungeon? Is is Wordna just not much of an interior decorator, or what? And uh, on top of that, yeah, like the addition of of just like some decoration and stuff specific to certain rooms would give you some landmarks. So it kind of, if a player wanted to turn off the auto map and everything, you know, they could still navigate by landmark uh, to an extent and be like, oh, I'm in the armory, or oh, oh, I'm in the kitchen, that kind of thing. I'm in the, la the laboratory. <laughs> uh, so I think that would be a nice addition. It says it is, you know, this, there's not much to look at. Like, it looks fine, what, what's here, but I would like to see more. Uh, the other thing is just gra while we're talking about graphics, I guess. Uh, the portraits are fine for the most part, but there's like a little, a little bit of a Mr. Potato Head thing going on. Like if I if I go out here, and we look, let's go to the training grounds. We'll delete this guy we just made. And uh, make someone else, like, if I want to make a character here, like, some of these mouths are kind of weird looking. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on with that, those mouths. But yeah, you can see, kind of see the Mr. Potato Head aspects. Like, the, this mouth is the same as that mouth. And, um, the, uh, I don't know, I think, it, well, maybe it's mostly just the mouths, I don't know. But it stands out a lot, um, and just kind of kind of looks cheap, <laughs> I guess, to to be blunt about it. Uh, and another thing that would be nice is to be able to import your own portraits. I guess uh, that'd be cool. That's that's a minor thing, but it's in a lot of games like this. So I don't know if that would be in the realm of possibility. Not like a huge priority or anything on that though. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So I'd like to see a little bit more uniqueness to, to the portraits um, so that we're not seeing obviously reused pieces here. Uh, aside from that, uh, when we're in the in the dungeon here, it'd be cool if we could actually just full on, like I said, you know, like uh, the graphics, what's here looks good, but what if we could take that screen in the bottom right and just play with the original graphics? <laughs> just full screen, you know? Uh, I think that would be cool. You know, there are a lot of games that have done that, like the Wonder Boy uh, remakes or whatever, or remasters, however you want to call them, uh, where you could switch between graphics modes on the fly. That'd be kind of a nice touch. Uh, aside from that, uh, the movement is real fast, which is good, because you're going to be doing a lot, of, a lot of walking back and forth between the same areas, I think, as you kind of grind to level up. But, uh, I don't know, maybe like a walk speed option might be pretty good. So you can just chill out. Because right now, <laughs> we are we're in a hurry to go somewhere, that's for sure. Um, it was a little jarring at first. I've kind of gotten used to it, so I don't know. I'm not sure how many people would really want to use that. Um, the other thing that I would like to see is that... The, uh, the auto map erases every time you come back. So, I, I don't know. I think that really what I'd like to see is... I'd like to see that persist with your Dumapik castings. Like, I actually haven't tried this. I'm not sure if casting Dumapik will erase your current big map if you have less explored or what. Like, right now, we don't have that much explored. Um, like basically just this hallway and that's what it looked like previously when I cast it last time because I walked around a bit so what if we cast it now uh no it's the same oh no I see okay 
So if I cast it again, it re... It gives me back my auto map. Okay, well... Uh, I, I guess, um... That's acceptable. Kind of wastes magic points, which I, I don't love, but... Um, at least there's a way to get your auto map back. But speaking of the auto map, there is one thing that... I'm not sure if this is a bug, or... If there's something else going on here, but let's get into another fight real fast, if we can. Um, yeah, all right. Four small humanoids, if they don't run from me, I'm going to try to run from them. Looks like we failed. You only get one run attempt, so as far as I can tell, anyway. All right, they ran from me. That's fine. We'll keep walking around until we can find... Uh, I don't really care about the chest right now. Until we can find a, a fight that we can actually run from successfully. Actually, we should probably... Yeah, we should go back and do some resting at the inn first, though. So, let's see here. Uh, go to the inn... Uh, sure, you can get a, get some HP back while you're doing this, I guess. I guess everybody really may as well... Do a little bit of that. Then actually, since we're here... You can get uh, a little bit of better armor... For you, actually. She can get a hat now, and she can wear a breastplate. And we can go back... Into here, and uh, we'll equip that. Like so. We'll go da 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 da. And then once you just give that to him, since he's a, uh, a thief, you can actually wear that now. Uh, yeah, inspect items. There you go. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, one thing I didn't mention with the class changing is that you keep all your spells. And uh, you get, you, you may lose some of your spell points for casting them, but you always end up with uh, basically a number of spell points equal to the number of spells that you know for that level. So that's a nice little little thing, which makes class changing really interesting, I think. And uh, if you've watched me play Wizardry 6 and 7, you know that I love me some class changing. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, definitely happy to see... That the even the, the original wizardry games have uh, some big emphasis on making class changing interesting. So there we go. We'll go ahead and do that. Do that healing real quick, and then we'll go back out. We'll rest and come back in. So I think ultimately, if you do this, your your priest is going to end up being a lot older than everybody else. But again, I'm not sure how much it matters. All right, let's see if we can get a fight here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about with this auto map issue. There's a couple little slimy guys here. Be able to run. These guys will never run, from what I've seen, so we should be able to... There we go. So look at our auto map now. It's all messed up. Completely wrong. We can't even go that way. So I don't know if this is just a bug or if it's like intended because like you ran away and you got all scrambled in where you are. And so now the map is messed up. But uh, it's very confusing. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. Whether intended or not. Um, personally, I would prefer if the game didn't do this to me. Like, I don't know if is this a problem that Dumapick can solve. It is. Okay. So maybe that's the intended way to solve that problem, or maybe that's just solving it because that's how Duma Pick works, and uh, it is in fact bugged. Well, actually, yeah. No, because that still looks wrong up there. So I would say it didn't really solve the problem, and maybe possibly messed up my map. I'm not sure. <laughs> so that probably needs to be looked, looked into. 
Uh, other just minor suggestions, like I don't know, I'm on the fence about it, but I think that a quick save option might be nice for super casual players who can't bear the thought of having characters die forever. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, I don't know. It, doing that kind of kills a lot of the tension of the game and really changes the overall mood, I think. So I don't know how I feel about that, but I don't know. I guess people can give their thoughts about it. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's that's kind of it. Just like for for 30 bucks, I, I kind of hope to see more. Like, I think for that price, you'll capture the attention of wizardry fans and nobody else. <laughs> uh, I don't think casual players who aren't familiar with the franchise are going to want to pay that kind of money to play a game that is this kind of simple. Um, just to be blunt about it, uh, you know, if I didn't get this for free, I probably would have waited at the very least for the game to be out of early access before I bought it. Uh, just being somebody who likes wizardry, I, uh, I would have picked it up you know, later, I think. Especially since I'm kind of in the middle of playing Wizardry 8 right now anyway, but... Uh, if it were 20 like $20, though, I probably would have just bought it myself without even asking for a key. Uh, just, uh, just my thoughts on, yeah, on kind of where the price is at, because I'm interested enough. And the other thing is, like, since there aren't that many mechanics updates, and there's Wizardry 2 kind of maybe on the table here. Like, I know we're, we haven't even finished Proving Grounds yet. Uh, you know, it's still in early access, but I do have to think about Wizardry 2, where it's my understanding that you kind of import your party from 1 to 2. Uh, in fact, I think you maybe had to even back in the day. And, uh, like, is Wizardry 2 also going to be $30? Uh, that's a lot of money for what is kind of... A, basically the same game <laughs> uh, with a, a new map or maybe the same map I don't actually know um, or is Wizard, Wizardry 2 going to be like a DLC for this game so maybe it's a little cheaper I don't know um, so those are kind of my thoughts and concerns on the pricing there uh, anyway though yeah I'm I'm personally really excited to see this though like you know you don't get too many dungeon crawlers these days of this style so uh, I'm I, uh, I'm looking forward to, to playing through this. I'll probably play through the, at least maybe if not all of it, some more of the DOS version that I have in the Wizardry Archives um, before I play through this one. Just uh, to, to kind of get a more of a taste for the original experience and then I'll be able to make more educated decisions about whether or not I'd like to enable some of the other quality of life options like for stats and age and stuff like that. Uh, and that is actually the other thing to note, though, is like, without this, you can't, you just, you can't buy Wizardry 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, as far as I know, for PC. Uh, they're just not for sale anywhere, so if you want to play Wizardry 1, you're looking at uh, doing some uh, some enterprising searches on the internet, or uh, going to places like eBay and looking for the Ultimate Wizardry Archives, or, you know, praying that uh, the floppy disk you bought still works. <laughs> Those are your options, pretty much. So it's really nice to see a, a revival um, so this, you know, people can actually play the games again. Uh, and and not just, just a revival, but one that seems to be pretty faithful to the uh, the original release, although it, admittedly, again, I haven't played the Apple II version, so I can't say for certain, but based on my experience with the DOS version, it does seem to be very, very close, very similar. So, um, super happy about that, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else is going on in the development of the game. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I don't know, we'll have to see how it goes. If there are major updates, maybe I'll come back and, and play a bit more. Uh, but otherwise, I'll probably wait until after Early Access is over before I do any kind of like full playthrough, I mean, especially with other stuff that we have going on right now, you know, specifically Wizardry 8, so uh, probably finish that first before we we jump into something like this. But uh, yeah, looking forward to playing some more, um, seeing what else they can do with it, and uh, 
I guess I'll catch you all next time. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll, I'll see if I can answer them. <laughs>